welcome to today's blog post. I am going to talk about today, uh, Christmas, post-Christmas, New Year's, and food. The commercial Christmas is over. The 12 days of Christmas are, you know, going to be over in, what, a few days? New Year is here. Now what? I myself am in a sugar hangover, a food hangover, and I vow today not to do that next year. It's not going to be about the goodies, it's not going to be about treats, it's going to be about Spending time with friends and doing for others, doing a lot of volunteer work, and taking the hectic out of Christmas. And something else that I am thinking about for next year is um, to get to know friends better. Get to know the people that um, are in my life better and give gifts according to their interests and what they really like instead of falling back on treats. Because everyone gets loaded with treats every year. We didn't make, we only made a couple different treats that we really enjoy. But our kitchen is full of treats still. From treats that we've gotten from others. And it's appreciated, yes. But everyone does this every year it seems. And I think for the coming year, for, for next Christmas, I want to concentrate on giving personal gifts. Get to know what people really enjoy. And it doesn't have to be a big gift, but a small gesture that says, hey, I really know you. I really know what you like and I don't have to fall back on treats that everybody is trying to limit it seems and I know maybe some of that comes from childhood you make your childhood favorites and that's fine but we get so overly sugared <laughs> this time of year and salt and fat and all these things I mean it is a festive time and feasts are not healthy <laughs> so you have to put the fun in it yes but I'm just thinking about next year or next Christmas as a time to really relate to people and help people rather than doing a lot of baking and giving a lot of food type of gifts because we know that everybody does this. Everybody bakes at Christmas time and gives gifts. And is it because it's something from childhood that you remember and you really love to do it and you really love to give these gifts? Um... Or is it because you don't know exactly what else to give? It's something that, and a lot of people have um, no uh, time. <laughs> Our time is a, at a premium and 
money may be an issue. So we do the baking, which, I mean, it still takes money, but it's something that's handmade, which is awesome. And it isn't as expensive as, say, something else um, that you may get. Um, and it, it's a good thing, but when you come, when it comes right down to it, I heard so many people say, I can't do this anymore. I can't take the sugar. I can't take all the food. So listen to those people. If you have those people in your life that you're hearing this from, if they absolutely love your fruitcake, if they absolutely love your breads or anything else, your cookies that you make, and they really look forward to them, that's one thing. But don't make it a something that you fall back on because you really don't know what else to give. Get to know your friends. Get to really know them and really know what they appreciate. And then you're really, you're giving them something that is really of use or really um, that they will so appreciate. And I think that that's my message from this time is don't overdo the junk food. Don't overdo the treats. Give, get the ones that you enjoy. Buy the ones that you enjoy. Just a couple of them. And then swear off making dozens and dozens and dozens of cookies and giving them away for Christmas. And dozens and dozens and dozens of, you know, mini breads and so on to give to people. And just... Make it about uh, friendships. Make it about being connected with people and giving them just a, a small gift that you know that they will absolutely love. And it's not going to put inches on them. It's not going to put pounds on them. It's not going to be unhealthy for them. It'll really boost your friendships, I think. And... Make it a more meaningful gift and more meaningful um, engagement with your friends. I think that's uh, something that I'm planning on doing because um, it's just gotten so hectic. Christmas has gotten so hectic and... It's not supposed to be a hectic time of year. It's supposed to be a time of spending time with those that you care about. And yes, the food is part of it. It's a festive time. So you're going to have that feast. But it's not all about that. It needs to be a time where you're doing uh, some maybe reflection and introspection of what you want for the coming year and uh, getting more connected with your faith, faith possibly. Um, And really making it more of a really special time of not really excess, but just... Those things are really, really important to you. And those people that are important to you, spend that time with them. But again, I, I've i talked about this in my um, Facebook Live uh, as well. About taking a year for us. My husband and I are doing that. Because 2017 was so crazy busy. And we lost touch with some of the things that we really enjoyed doing. And we didn't have as much alone time 
as we would like. So we're changing that up. We're, we're doing uh, a year of us. And next year and next Christmas, hopefully we can continue with that. Do what we really feel that we want to do, which is volunteering and really getting personal gifts for people that really, that they would absolutely love or really could use and not going for the calories. And you know, like I said, unless you know someone who absolutely loves it, and that really appreciates the the time and the uh they just like your stuff you <laughs> they like what you bake and they look forward to it every year maybe that's the case that's fine but i'm talking about not being on autopilot not being on autopilot thinking that just because you made dozens and dozens of cookies with your mother as a child, you don't have to do that anymore for Christmas to be special. You don't have to give food to people for Christmas for it to be special. Give your time. Give your friendship. Give those kind of things. And they're, they're free. But they are the most special gifts, I think. Because you're just, you're relating to someone. You're listening to someone who has issues that they're going through that they really need somebody just to listen to them. And that could be the most special gift that you could give someone. Is your your time, your ear, and your compassion. So think about that. Instead of the... Um, you know, mountains and mounts of food that that you get barraged with and that you give out um, and the, you know, masses of gifts. Uh, give a small token of your friendship, a small token of, that, that shows that you really know this person, you really care about this person. And it could even, it could not even maybe be a thing. Like I said, if you know that this person is wanting friendship and wanting someone to just listen to them, you could put a, you could put a coupon book together. I actually gave my husband a coupon book for Christmas that I made and it has all sorts of stuff in there. It has um, your pick movie night. Um, it has um, alone time, X amount of alone time credits. Uh, and your pick uh, restaurant where we eat out. I mean, yes, that's going to cost money, but it's, it's something that you're, I was thinking of all the things that he really likes. And so many times he lets me pick a restaurant or we spend time together and he doesn't get very much time alone. I have more time alone than he does. So that alone time means a lot to him. And it's free. It's alone time. It's to do whatever he wants to do. Just chill. Whatever. Um, so think of those things. You could give a coupon book. You could you know, make a coupon book of things you really, you know that this person likes. And would appreciate. And it won't cost you that much money. But it will mean the world to the person because they realize that you really know what they really like and that you took the time to make this for them and 
maybe at, you know just different things that you like to do together or different things that you know that that person likes to do uh put it in the coupon book and have that be your gift and it it does mean a lot i mean Jim has asked for the coupon book for Christmas. So you know that it's something that, or I know that it's something that he really appreciates, that he really likes. So that's just a little bit of uh, my, a uh, little bit of my advice for, or my suggestions for next Christmas. And... Hopefully it helps. Hopefully if the hectic Christmas is getting on your nerves and getting to be something that you really aren't interested in anymore, you can change it. It's up to you to change it. Do the things that you want to do and spend the time with the people that you really want to spend time with. And get to know those friends and get to know what they really like and find pleasure in picking one gift. It doesn't have to be a ton of gifts. Just one gift that you know will put a smile on that person's face and let them know that you know them and that you love them and that you cared enough about them to really get to know them and get to know what they like. And I'm I'm noticing that too. I I used to just get pretty much the same things for everybody and we did that similarly this year, but we tried to make it a little bit healthier and also put personal things in there that we know we knew that someone would really like um but i think that my my goal for next year or next christmas is to really key on what people like and get that not have you know the same thing for everybody get something even just one thing that i know that they'll really like and i know that it's it's the giving. It's the thought that counts. And it's the giving. And that is very true. But I feel for my own... You know, this, is, this is my own opinion. That I would rather spend the time really giving something that would be special to that person, personal to that person, and not so much just everything, you know, everything the same for everybody. You know, I've done that a lot, and I'm, I'm gonna change that for next year, next Christmas. I keep saying next year. It's not next year, it's this year, but it's way over there. <laughs> but don't, uh, this is another thing, though. Do you find that Christmas comes faster each year? <laughs> it's like, it seems like we should, like, have, it, it goes by, like, in minutes, it seems. The year goes by in minutes. It's like, it's Christmas again. I mean, it, it's a nice, it's a nice heartwarming and festive time of year. But it does take a lot of work. And it, or it could. I mean, it seems like people are always hectic, crazy, busy, doing a lot of things during Christmas. And I'm like, well, why don't we spread it out? You know, t spend time with your friends and family throughout the year in little bits instead of this all at Christmas, you know, and and the from Thanksgiving on until New Year's, it's just, you know, crazy. And there's not really much relaxation time. Make a point to have that relax relaxation time. 
and make a point to keep in touch, not just with a Christmas card, but keep in touch throughout the year with those people that you really, really care about and really want to spend time with and want to keep in touch with. And then at Christmas, it's not going to be this crazy, oh, I got to contact this person. Oh, I got to contact. Maybe you just talked to them last month. You know, you don't have to make it such a crazy busy time. Spend it with those people that you really, really want to spend it with and doing the things that you really want to do that are fulfilling for you and that you really want to do instead of this crazy busy stuff where you think, okay, well, it's a tradition for me to do this every year. Is it your tradition or something that came from childhood that really you just do automatically now? It really doesn't mean that much to you. If it means a lot to you, sure. But if it doesn't, if it's just like extra work that you say, well, we've always done it, so we need to do it again. If it doesn't mean that much to you anymore, make your new traditions. Make new traditions that really you can you can get into and you can really be it can really be heartwarming and exciting and fun instead of just the same old same old that you do every year and it just gets to be tedious it shouldn't be tedious this is a special time of year and you need to concentrate on what re- it really means to you and what you really want to do during that time to make it special, to make it really something you enjoy and that you have great memories of. Not just this cookie cutter type of Christmas that you've always done and that you think you should do. And it's like this year, um, well, it actually, you know, New Year's Eve, um, we, most of the time, you know, in the last several years, maybe, we've had a New Year's Eve party. But we decided not to this year. We decided to have a quiet Chris, or quiet New Year's because the whole month of December was really busy, both in work and in getting together with friends. And we thought, we're just not going to do it. And some People were surprised that we didn't, and others realized that it's okay. It's okay to do a change, you know, have a change in your schedule, in your routine. And maybe next year we'll have it again. But this year we didn't. And so that's okay. Changing your routine, changing your traditions, getting you know, involved in different things, doing uh, something different, creating different traditions is fine. Go with what you feel like at the time. When Christmas comes, think, are you dreading it? If you're dreading it, something has to change. Are you excited about it? Are you saying, oh, great, we're going to be doing all these parties. We're going to uh, have all these traditions that we are looking forward to and uh, getting together to have potlucks or get all sorts of gifts together for people. If that's your thing, if that's something that you really enjoy, go for it. But if it's getting tedious, if it's getting tiresome, if it's something that is just not working anymore, is just not fun anymore, Christmas is a time to celebrate, yes. And it's a time to reflect. And it's a time to uh, be together with other people. But it's also a time to... It's personal. It's something that that you really need to look inside. I'm always saying look inside. But it's true. You look inside and 
find out what you really want to do and what's really important to you. If you want to spend time with a bunch of family, with a bunch of friends, you know, plan that. Plan that way ahead of time saying, hey, how about doing this for Christmas? Maybe you want to travel for Christmas. Maybe you want to have a quiet time with your significant other, with your kids. Anything. But it, it's personal and you got to make it personal instead of just doing what you think you should do. Have Make it be really meaningful. So, well, I hope those tips and uh, the information are helpful for you. And I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year. And I hope this New Year ahead is is wonderful for you. I hope that you have health and happiness and have the progress that you are looking for, the adventures that you're looking for. Maybe you're into travel and you want to go all over the place. I hope you get to all or at least some of those places that you'd like to go to this year. And maybe you'll discover a new hobby this year. This this is about new beginnings. It, the new year is about new beginnings. Make it something that is really special to you. Make it something that you can look back on and say, yeah, that was a good year. Because you did what you wanted to do. You did things that are very special to you. You spent the time with people that really mean a lot to you. And I hope that that happens. I hope you have one of those years that that it, you really can look back and say that was a good year. So, take care. And I wish you again a happy new year and a new year full of positive stuff, positive things, good things, and uh, lots of things to look forward to. And I will catch you back here on Friday since I didn't do a Monday vlog this, this time. I'll be back on Friday. And if you want to contact me, you can put a message in the uh, comments below. Or you can contact me at amy at acnlifecoach.com. Comment about what I've been talking about today. Ask me about my coaching services. I'm always open to people asking questions about it. And I do have a free 30-minute uh, coaching call available, a coaching session, where we get to know each other a little bit more and get to know if we would be a good coach-client match. Totally free, no obligation. You just get together and see if we click and see if I'm the right coach for you. You take care and I'll catch you back here on Friday. And my email again is amy at acnlifecoach.com.